Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started with this week's lesson. So last week we were talking about um, inferences for two samples or just for one sample, but now we're going to move to two samples. So um, just kind of having that as a basis is important so that we can go forth and actually do it now for two samples. Um, so just a review of those five hypothesis testing procedures that we will have every single time uh, whenever we're doing a hypothesis test. Um, the main difference between all of them are the first two steps because the assumptions and the test statistic equation are always going to be uh, different between the uh, different groups that you're comparing. And uh, but then, you know, the last three are always going to basically be the same because you're going to always get that p-value, make a decision, and then make a conclusion. So, um, so yeah, these are just a kind of a review uh, because these are the basis of the ones that we will use every single time for each of these. So, two independent proportions. This is going to be talking about, so remember, proportions are with categorical variables. And uh, we're going to talk about first, these are the assumptions that have to be met when we have two of them. So last week we did talk about just having one. So we kind of only had like half of all this stuff on this slide. So we only had this part basically um, without the ones and then basically half of this equation. But all we're doing now, since we have two groups um, and they are independent of one another, so they don't affect one another. Since we have two groups now, we have to add in the second uh, condition that has to be met and then also add in the standard error of the second group. So basically you're adding the two standard errors and then um, taking the square root of them and then that's how you get that. And then um, if we're still talking about the difference between two proportions, um, and remember once again, they are independent of one another. We're using Z star because we are talking about proportions. Remember T star will be for means, we'll get to that. Um, and like I said before, you know, this is basically all you're doing is adding this P hat two to all the different parts of the equation in order for it to uh, be for two different proportions instead of just one. So, you know, before we only had like p hat and then z and then this side of the equation, but now we have to add in that p hat two and then the standard error of that second proportion two. Okay, so, and so basically after, so that was kind of just discussing, you know, what the assumptions are and what, um, you know, that to, the confidence interval for it. But now if we want to do a hypothesis test, we want to make sure that, um, those conditions are still met. We still want to make sure that the um, we have 10 successes and 10 failures in each group, which is what we did. Um, same for confidence intervals, but in this case, we're um, just this is for hypothesis testing. But the, it's a, basically the same um, con the same assumption needs to be met for both groups in order for us to continue moving forward with this. Um, and then once again, like I was telling you last week, basically these are just different, like a good schematic for you to kind of see, you know, what null hypothesis should be written when um, these are the basis research questions that you're asking. Um, so this is just something good to refer to and kind of understand, you know, why uh, these are always going to be your, um, so null hypothesis always has that equal sign and then your alternative is going to have that uh, inequality to it at some point, never have an equal sign there. And then when you are doing a hypothesis test for two independent proportions, what you want to do here for that test statistic, remember, is going to be Z because we were talking about proportions. And then all you want to do is make this equation. So it's a similar equation that we do for, um, you know, having, if we just did a test statistic for one proportion. So we had that, um, remember, we just had one proportion here, our null and then our standard error. But in this case, we do want to make sure that we have both um, proportions there in order for us to, uh, find that test statistic for these two independent proportions. And once again, like I said, you know, these last three steps are always going to be the same, but I just want to review, um, you know, just to remember that these are important steps to it. Uh, so determining the p-value associated with the test statistic, we are going to have that z distribution with that mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Um, so that's just a general rule, but just like I said, as a review. And then obviously decide between the null and alternative your p-value greater than or less than alpha, and then state that conclusion. So these last three steps are basically the same for every single one, uh, just it's gonna be context specific on the problem. Okay, and then just two independent means. So we're talking about quantitative variables and means and t-stars uh, for our test statistics. So this is a confidence interval for two independent means. It's very similar to our confidence interval for two independent proportions, because see we're just kind of adding in this x-bar to the uh, sample the sample mean uh, for the second group. And then same thing here, you know, when we only had one, we just saw this part of the equation, but now we're just adding in that second standard error to the uh, that side of the equation. And once again, T star is gonna be used because we're talking about means. 
And so here's hypothesis testing for two independent means. Like I said, you want to make sure that you start, um, you know, checking those assumptions, which are different for each uh, hypothesis test that you're doing. So you want to go ahead and check those assumptions where the null and alternative uh, down here. Like I said, this uh, two-way table shows you the different null and alternatives that you would write based upon this basis uh, research question. And then but, um, remember the assumptions that have to be met is that data have to be independent and both populations are normally distributed. Uh, but then if that's not true, um, if, it, if they are skewed, we want to make sure that the sample size are at least 30. And then even if they're skewed, we're able to continue on and um, use that. So. And then this is the test statistic equation. You can literally just split this down the center if you want to remember what uh, just for one independent mean was. And then, you know, just adding in these two parts, that's going to be for two independent means. Uh, yeah, in that case. So that's just how you do your test statistic. Um, same idea, just making sure that you add in the second part for your second group. And lastly, like I said, uh, last three steps are always the same, except your p-value is going to be based upon a t-test statistic um, in comparison to a z-test statistic when we're talking about proportions. So let's try out some samples here um, and do some review questions. So uh, test whether the treatment is significantly better than a placebo at relieving pain. The patients were randomly allocated to the two groups and the experiment was double blind subscript uh, one is the treatment group and then so down here where I'm showing it and then uh, subscript two is the placebo group so find the relevant sample proportions in each group and the pool proportion so that's going to be our last one here so if you're watching this back go ahead and just pause the video try to solve this one out and then we're going to go ahead over it together um, so let's write out how we would do this um, so this is just kind of understanding where we're going to get this um, information from. So p hat one, that's our. Um, it'd be helpful if I plug this in. Um, p hat one is going to be our. Uh, it says our subject. That's our treatment group. Okay, so we're talking about this one. So we're looking for. We're seeing you know if it did re relieve pain or not. So we're looking at this one. So we're going to have forty two divided by our total number um, for each group. So this is for each group. So this is going to be 81. That's going to come out to about 0 0.519. And then for p hat 2, same thing, except for placebo. We're going to use these two numbers. Um, so we'll have 22 over 76, which is going to be about 0 0.289. And then lastly, um, we're looking for our pooled proportion here. So we're looking for everyone that relieved pain, so 64 out of that total amount, the 157. And then we get about 0 0.408, and those are going to be how we find those. So this is mainly kind of understanding, you know, for p hat 1, what, you know, which uh, different, you know, values are we going to use in this example? Or example, yeah. So these are the three different um, sample proportions that we ended up getting from this sample. All right, let's just do uh, another one. So using data from a study, we find significant difference in the proportion of fruit flies surviving after 13 days between those eating organic bananas and those eating conventional non-organic bananas. If we're trying to test if the proportion of fruit flies at alive after eating their organic bananas, which would be our P subscript null, uh, is higher than the proportion of those alive eating the conventional bananas, P subscript C, what would our null and alternative hypotheses be? So go ahead and pause this, see what you can come up with. So remember our null hypothesis is always gonna have an equal sign and then our alternative is gonna either have not equals to, greater than or less than. So in this case, we are trying to find for our null hypothesis, this would be saying that, um, that there's no change, basically that they both live the same amount. So you can write it as P subscript zero equals, or, and yeah, you look your null P is P equal to P subscript C. This would mean that um, they live the same amount. There's no difference. You can also write it like this, um, means the same thing. It's basically saying, you know, because obviously if these were the same number as we were showing in this first example, um, if you subtracted them, they would equal zero. And then for alternative hypothesis, this is going to be a right tail test because it's talking about um, if they are surviving longer. So uh, we're saying that our null, so the non-organic bananas, 
are going to have, um, I mean, excuse me, the organic bananas, oops, are going to be, they're going to live longer than the conventional bananas. Um, and then, like I said, you can also write it like this. Um, is P? P is greater than zero because um, this would make sense because obviously this number would have to be greater than this number in order for um, your final answer to be greater than zero and not negative, um, which is what this one is saying here. So those would be our null and alternative hypotheses. Okay. All right, so using data from a study, we're looking to see if there's a difference. Uh, our alpha level would be 0.05, probability of a type one error. Uh, and the proportion of fruit flies surviving after 13 days, da, 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 da. So same question, okay, but now we're giving you that sample size. So our organic banana sample size, 345, 320 are gonna be alive after eating the conventional, um, or the conventional bananas. Both groups have a sample size of 500. So yeah, excuse me, I'm sorry. The sample, the amount of, that are alive after the organic bananas is 345, 320 for the conventional bananas, and then sample size for each group is 500. So um, the main idea here is, you know, you want to discuss, you know, what, I mean, you can find the, a test statistic with this one if you want to, you know, you have all the information, but um, just this kind of, you know, to dig home that point of, you know, what we can conclude based upon our p-values. Um, so this p-value here, so 0.47, um, we're comparing that with alpha. So 0 0.47 is going to end up being greater than our alpha, which is 0.05. So we are going to fail, or we're not going to fail. We're going to fail to reject the null. So we're saying that right now we're, we, we're still concluding that there's no change. Um, we're going to keep that assumption. So we're basically saying that we don't think that um, the organic bananas can like live longer or whatever. So, um, or the other way around. So, so yeah. Okay. So that is the conclusion that we make there. Alrighty, so that's what we got for tonight, guys. Uh, go ahead and definitely watch these back on YouTube. It's a good study tool for you. Our next review will be on Thursday, March 29th, same time, same place, 10 p.m. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, you guys can have a great night.